Hi all, I'm Jeanette Keynes from Jewelry Arts Inc. So today I'm gonna to show you how to solve a really common problem when you're doing woven quadruple link chains, which is broken links. Don't worry, we'll fix them and it's not that hard. Uh, when you're making one of these chains, it's very common to break to have a links break and the ends stick out a little bit. Do not be alarmed, that's pretty normal. It's actually, if you can do an entire chain and not have any of them break, uh, you should feel extremely satisfied with yourself because it's pretty common. So if possible, if you can find where the other end of that little broken link is, I press it back together and solder it shut. But because of the way it's woven, you can't always find the other end. You know what I mean? So in that case, I just take pliers and I press it back down into the weave right next to another piece of wire. Mm -hmm. And we put a tiny piece of solder there just to hold it within the weave. And once you've done that, you won't even really see it. You know, what makes you see it is it tends to, you know, pop out at you. You know what I mean? Once you solder it to a little wire next to it, you, you know what I mean? You won't notice it again. Okay. Uh, so one thing I learned to do is, let me have a Sharpie, please, because you see the, the spot, you sit it down, and you're like, where the fuck is that spot? And uh, I only had to do that five or six billion times before I wised up, so don't be like me. Okay, here's a Sharpie. I thought I had a fat one, but... That's okay. We only need a little mark. Just more visible. See it yes. I, I, when you rub okay. your fingers, you can really Yeah, you can feel, feel it. it, exactly right. So you see this right here? This I'm gonna actually pull him out a little bit just so you can see it a little more clearly. Yes. Okay, there he is. And I'm just gonna kind of like put some Sharpie here so that when I set it down, I don't forget where it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like I said, if the other end is right there, great. But usually it isn't. Mm -hmm. Usually you just have to take it. So what I would do, and actually I would still zoom in on this, mm -hmm. Uh, you either take your pliers or uh, another one of my favorite tools, the good old fingernail, <laughs> take it and press it down in. You don't want a dowel? You could do also use a dowel. Because the most important thing is like, I, what I'm gonna try to do with this is get it next to his little friend, right next door. Do you see what I'm saying? This is the one that's loose. I'm gonna press it in there so it's in contact with this one because when I add the solder, I'm basically gonna put it right between those two links and it's gonna be a tiny little bowl mm -hmm. and that one little attachment is all that it takes. Okay, so just let me see where you're putting it. Which okay, so the one mark with black right here, this is the loose one. Okay. So I pressed it in sort of just with my fingernail, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to use the dowel mm -hmm. to press it a little deeper in and right next to this little guy right okay. here. Okay, does it matter next to which? Basically, like, it's you to your closest about? neighbor Do, Okay, is what you're looking for, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So... Okay, what, which solder do you want? Um, I guess medium, but hard or medium doesn't really matter. Because the key is what you don't want to do is just shove a link back in and then just like put a bunch of solder in there and flow it and hope that it holds. What you want to do is do this very surgically where it's one tiny ball of solder right where you need it. Um, because you don't, if you start just spreading solder in here, you'll start to see it and you don't want that. Yeah, we didn't want that. Right, you want a really tiny piece? I will, cut, I will cut my own. But I mean, you want to But yes, I do. So if you want to zoom in, like this is where I'm going to put my piece of solder, where this, this is the one that's loose, that's marked black. This is the one that isn't loose. And I'm going to put a little ball of solder right there where they touch each other. I know that's ridiculously tiny, but right there is where my little bowl of solder is going to go. Mm -hmm. I think that's as skinny as I have. Yeah, that's fine because I'll cut. I'll cut yeah. some little tiny pieces. Well, you know what? I'm going to know a piece too. I don't think these are already milled. You don't need to mill those. They are. Yeah. They feel very thick. Like it's still. A, do you mill it before you sell it? Because that. We looks usually like do. Yeah. Milled. It does feel a little thicker, but 
I'm gonna cut a little ridiculous piece, so. Oh, okay. So normally what I do also is you're gonna have more than one. So I never just cut one piece. I just cut some little tiny ones so that we have yeah. choices. Also, there's nothing more annoying than cutting the one perfect piece of solder that fits, you will immediately drop it, and then you'll have to go through the process again. Here, so. Kind of coils up a little bit. You know, you usually have to flatten it out. Do you see that? I've got some like really mm -hmm. ridiculously tiny, tiny little tiny. pieces. You know, I'm gonna cut a couple more just so that you have them because we're gonna need to go yeah. through and, and yeah, because uh, there's not there's more than one loose. <laughs> but wait, yeah. there's but more. Wait, there's more. <laughs> exactly. Okay. And is your tank on, sweetie? Uh, I haven't turned it. Okay. Now, you might be very nervous about soldering this because you think, oh, the chain is going to like melt. Mm -hmm. It's actually not as fragile as you think because all the links are, are interwoven and touching each other. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the heat tends to dissipate. I mean, I'm not saying do anything and you can never melt it, but with the normal procedure, you're not going to have a problem. Okay, you're using a zero test? Uh. I might use a double zero. Let's see. I got one right here. Let's try that. Will you hand me a um, sparker, though, please? I'm sorry, what? Oh, uh, a striker. Striker, thank you. Oh, striker. <laughs> sparker striker. Fine, one that works. It takes a village, apparently, for, for me to get a sentence out, so we just have to work together. Why are you using medium and not IT or hard? You can. It doesn't Honestly, it's it's like it doesn't really matter because it's not going to be close enough to anything else that even if you use medium on the term, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. medium is the most cooperative. It so melts quicker than IT. Yeah, so but I mean oh, honestly nice. any of those would, mm -hmm. would work fine. This is fine silver, so IT hard or medium. Okay. So if you're making it in Old, you'd be using 22 karat wire and you'd use 20 karat solder yeah or 18 or whatever or but I mean even. but again know. when you lower the color you might start to see the difference so usually I'm using 22 20. or 22 solder 22 solder yeah uh -huh. okay okay so I need this to be right here so I like to use the paste flux but if you use a large amount of paste flux you're just gonna have a big crunchy mess and you're not gonna be able to see anything so I'm gonna take my tweezers Put the tiniest little dab right there. Now, usually you dip the solder into the paste look, so why this method? This is a very tiny ball of solder, and the odds are sometimes good when you take that tiny one in there and stick it in there that you're going to drop it. Oh. So, you know what I mean, but, but whatever I, method works. Okay. I want to make sure there's a very small piece of flux here, okay. a very small amount. Do you know what I mean? Dipping might give you too much. Okay, dipping the solder may give you too much. Yeah. Okay. 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 You zoom in. So you see that little stinker right there? I know this is like hyper tiny. Yeah, but isn't it all? I mean, it is. Granulation? Yes. Yeah. Come on. No, I know. The necks in the granulation. <laughs> okay, I like to have my tweezers ready to go in case when I heat my flux, you know, the solder jumps around. And so you're heating it from below below the solder. Yep. So basically I'm getting both links hot and when the flux you know goes and then the solder it'll just flow in there. I actually could have used a little slightly bigger tip as a matter of fact because it should have flowed a little sooner mm -hmm. so I will change to do that but you see that mm -hmm. it just flowed. Mm -hmm. Now that tiny amount of solder will be basically invisible, but it's plenty strong enough to hold it. So usually what I do is I just go through, I mark where they are, and one by one, either press them next to their neighbor, or if you can, press them next to their other end. But a lot of times you can't find the other end. The other end is 
somewhere in the middle. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if you do find the other end, would you pull it out or just oh, try and push bit. that in? I okay. try to more push it in because if you do too much pulling out and then you push it all back in, things are going to start to end up, you know, looking a little ratty, which mm -hmm. is not what you really want. So okay. usually, if you if you have a choice between the two. Shove it in there. Shove the broken one <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And my next question is, um, do you mark them and then solder, or you go and mark it all? You can mark it all and then work your way through. As long as they're not that close to each other, the markers still be there. Right. But whatever, you know, floats your boat. Okay. Okay? All right. That's my mission. Okay.